So we proved that we can conduct this hypothesis test because we've met the three requirements. So of course, letter B is going to actually have us conduct said hypothesis test. And there's a typo in there. I don't know what that's called. Com um, it's the hypothesis test from you showing all steps. Actually, I didn't even have to say that. All right, sorry about that. I'll fix that for future as well. I must have been very tired when I did this page. All right, so step one, we need to establish some hypotheses. And for that, we have to go back to the paragraph. I mean, obviously, we're not talking about proportions here. And the only other option we have is mean. So when you have data like this, it's going to be a mean question because we don't do standard deviations and there's no way this is a proportion question. So this is definitely about the means. Remember that the null hypothesis is always equal. Okay, so then the other way, by the way, that you know it's about means is it has the word average in it, which is a sign. But even if I hadn't said the word average in there, you would have known that this is a mean problem. All right, now what do we assume to be true? Well, we assume that the average credit score is 703. Okay, so you assume that it's 703. And then this particular person working for Capital One Bank believes the credit score for their customers is different than that value. Different than that value means not equal to, right? That's not giving you a particular direction. That's just not equal to. So down here, we can say not equal to. And then remember, it's the same number for both. So whatever you assume to be true is still assumed. All right, step two, alpha. Alpha is your level of significance, which is 0 0.05. It's always given to you. Alpha is your favorite step. Unfortunately for you, it's only worth one point, but you know, take what you can get. <laughs> all right, T0. I'm going to write the formula because it shows, you know, write the formulas and all that stuff. Give me all the steps. So it's x bar minus mu zero over s over the square root of n. If you look at the formula on the formula sheet, this one's true just to remind you of what's going on, but it's not really the one we want to use for substitution. We want to use the far right one. So it's x bar minus mu zero divided by the standard error. And the standard error of x bar is s over the square root of n. Okay, well, we need to find some values. The only value I know right now is mu zero, which is 703, because that's the one from the zero hypothesis. And actually, I take that back. I know that it's the square root of 28 on bottom, because I know n is 28 because I counted them in the data set. But I do not know what x bar is, nor do I know what s is. Uh, but I know how to find them, because we've done that before. So let's see here. If I go back to StatCrunch and I close down these graphs that I don't need to see anymore, and I go to Sat, Summary Stat, Columns, it's been a long time, it's good to review, and I click Credit Score, I really need the mean and the standard deviation. And N doesn't hurt me, I might as well throw N in there for fun. But I need the, uh, the X bar and the S, right? And that's what mean and standard deviation are. So when I click Compute, it'll tell me right there. The mean is 634.6. The standard deviation is 112.6. So I'm going to write those values in. 634.6 goes in the numerator and 112.6 goes in the denominator. Here, let me show you. Right here. Right there. All right, but that's not the actual value. That's not what I'm looking for. That was just to help me along. I still need to be able to find the value from the calculator, or excuse me, from StatCrunch. So let me go to Stat, Oop, wait, Stat, there we go, T Stat, one sample, and with data this time. I actually have a column of data sitting in my um, StatCrunch applet. So I'm going to click with data, I'm going to click credit score because that's my data column. And then it wants to know right here, what's the hypothesis, what are the hypotheses? So this is 703, and hey, I want not equal to 703, so that's perfect. And if I didn't do a normal probability plot before, I could do one right there. It's actually an option, but I'm not going to do it. But in case you're wondering, so I can click Compute, and there you have it. It actually tells you the sample mean right there. It just doesn't tell you the standard deviation. It tells you standard error, which is the denominator. That's what 112.6 divided by the square root of 28 is. So if I took that denominator right there, 
the, this value right here would be 21.287. That's the standard error down there. But it's not really relevant. What I really want to know is what it's equal to, and that's the T stat. It's negative 3.213. So it's negative 3.213 right there. That's the test statistic. That's T stat. And again, you get this from technology. You don't find that on your own, right? As a matter of fact, we needed technology to find X bar and S as well because they weren't given to us either. All right, I did all of that with uh, StatCrunch. Of course, I could also use the calculator. So I'm going to leave that up. So if I'm going to go to the calculator, unfortunately, I have to enter this data myself. I don't have the ability to share data with you on the calculator the way I do on StatCrunch. So you'd have to go clear out all this old data in Stat Edit, and then you'd have to type in all the new data. So I'm going to pause right now for a second, and I'm going to type all this in, and I'll show you how to do this in the calculator as well. If all you're interested in is Stat Crunch, you can kind of zoom past all of this, and I will show you um, how to do step four next, but after I show the calculator. Okay, so I have all the values typed into the calculator. And if you remember, it says right at the very top of the sheet that you want to use t-test. So we're going to go to stat, tests, we're going to pick number two, which is t-test. And just like with StatCrunch, we're going to tell it data. So you go over to the data part and you press enter. And then you tell it what mu zero was, which was 703 for us. And then our list is where our data set is located. So our data set was an L1, so that's perfect, list one. And then I want not equal to as my alternative. So that works out great for me. And go down to calculate and press enter. And there you can see you have the same number as we did with StatCrunch. The T value is negative 3.213. All right, now what about the P value? Because we need that for the next piece. So in the calculator, it says P equals 0 0.0033. 3.38886, so in other words, 0034, and that's exactly what StatCrunch gives us. StatCrunch gives us 0 0.0034. So either way you want it, it's fine, right? Use either StatCrunch or the calculator, but you're going to get that p-value of 0 0.0034. Okay, so now which picture do we draw? Well, we chose a not equal to right here. So since we chose not equal to, that means we have to draw the two-tailed picture. And again, it has those absolute values in there. Don't freak out. Just write them, right? Write what it says to write. So it don't, it, don't make it more difficult than it needs to be. This is technically a t-curve with degrees of freedom 27 because n is 28, but it doesn't really make that much difference to us. We know that the middle is zero right here, and you figure one, two, three, and some change. So that's like right there. So we're going to have the absolute value of T0 is over here, which is 3.213. Because if you take the absolute value of negative 3.213, you'd have positive 3.213. That's why they put the absolute value signs around there. And then you have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So you figure the other side's over here somewhere. And that's negative absolute value of T0, which is negative 3.213. And then you shade the tails. And those tails should be equal. Sorry, I made them a little bit bigger on the right than the left there. So don't get upset. Don't worry about it. Put an absolute value sign. Make the positive number on the right. Put the negative number on the left. Our number, T0, was negative. So that's the one on the left right here. And then its opposite goes here on the right. Because 0, of course, is in the middle of a T-curve. We learned that in Chapter 9. Right? You are following the script that this lovely, lovely table gives you. So it's telling you do negative absolute value T0, positive absolute value T0. So draw them in. Now your p-value, you see it's a two-tailed test, so it gets that double-sided arrow. So we're going to go up here and we're going to say p-value. And the p-value was 0 0.0034. It came out of technology. So you don't, it doesn't come by magic, right? You find it from technology either from the calculator or from StatCrunch, whichever way you want to use, or whichever one you want to use. All right, now we get back to the parts that have not changed. So really steps one and two are not that different. The only thing that's different is you have to use mu, right? Step three and four, well, three is different because it uses a different formula. Four is basically the same, it just uses t's instead of z's, and everything comes out of the calculator or from StatCrunch. 
And then step five, we're going to make the same decision. If your P value is low, i.e. lower than your alpha, then you're going to reject HO. All right. Well, let's see. My P value is 0 0.0034. The alpha was 0 0.05. 0 0.0034 is less than 0 0.05. So therefore, we are going to reject H naught. Step six, you're going to write the conclusion. Remember, this was from section 10.1. There was a table about how to write conclusions. Since we reject H naught, we would say there is sufficient evidence. In case I haven't made it clear before, everything I am writing on this page, with the exception of the little pink parts where it says from tech, everything else needs to be here. All of it every last step. You can't avoid any of it. You have to have all your steps labeled in order, everything, um, your pictures labeled in an order, everything, everything has to be here. Just so you know. All right, so there's sufficient evidence to support the claim that. All right, now what were we trying to claim? <laughs> it's a good thing. All right, so the claim is right here that the mean is not 703. Now what the heck was that talking about? Let's go back. This was talking about the average credit score, and this researcher believed that their customers were different for Capital One, and we did not have enough evidence to support that. Doesn't mean it's not true. It means we didn't have the evidence for it. It's the difference between innocent and not guilty, right? So uh, we would say there's not sufficient evidence to support the claim that Capital One customers have a credit score different than 703. Remember, we follow the script for the first part, right? That there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that that part never changes, right? The only thing that can change is you can put the word not in there if you do not reject. And then you have to go back to the context and write what H1 was in context, right? This is our alternative with context. And that's what we're writing. Right, what was going on for this particular problem?